Playing first base is a little bit different than the other infield positions because at first base, you have some help. Once the ground ball is hit to you, you don't have to field it every single time cleanly. If you do not, you always have the pitcher covering first base to make a nice easy feed. So my range is going to be toward the line or I'm going to look toward second base in the hole. Now that's my range and I want to think like a goalie of knocking it down and then once I knock the ball down, picking it up with my bare hand because the ball should be still or rolling slightly, pick it up and make a nice toss to my pitcher covering. Where a first baseman plays in the infield, his relationship toward first base is critical. He needs to make sure that he can get there in plenty of time on hard hit or even soft hit baseballs, but making sure that he can cover the gap in between first and second. There's more balls hit during the course of a season in the hole than to the line. So a lot of young first basemen make the mistake of playing so close to the line that they give the hole up and make it tough on our second baseman. Each time that I set up, when I'm in normal depth or playing toward pull or in the hole, I always need to check my second baseman because if he's playing over, I know that he's got more area, he can cover more area in the hole, so I might be able to cheat toward the line and cover more space in the infield. But if my second baseman is playing to second base bag or if he's playing more in double play depth, I need to move up and over so we can cover this hole for that slow roller and the ball in the hole, making sure that I can get to it so we can get it out. Fielding ground balls at first base. We need to make sure that we, first of all, catch the ball or knock it down so that the pitcher can cover first so we can get an out. But if we catch it, catch the ground ball normal, we should be in a nice fielding triangle so our hands are out, staying low, and making sure the ball stays right here, our chest stays in front of the ground ball. And one of the mistakes that a lot of first basemen make is, once they catch it, they take their hand back and like wind up toward the throw and what happens is when the pitcher comes across when you wind up his first instinct is to back away because he can't tell how hard you're going to toss it. So we need to make sure that we make it easy on him and show the baseball and get it there on time and straight to him. So once we make the fielding triangle coming through the baseball we want to separate and create a stiff arm and use our momentum, use the legs to get the toss to our target, which will be the first, uh, which will be the pitcher covering first base. One of the keys: follow your toss to make it easier. Once you separate. You can show it to him, and then that way he knows the speed, he sees the baseball as he's trying to run, catch the baseball, and tag the first base at the same time. Sometimes ground balls are hit pretty deep to us, and we still have, we have plenty of time to make the feed, the underhand feed toward our pitcher. To do this, we get into our fielding triangle and we separate as I create the stiff arm and I'm taking a long toss to first base. I want to bury my, my glove into my chest to create more torque as I go to my target. This is for that long toss that you really have to generate a lot of power, a lot of speed with your legs and use your glove to create some torque to get the ball straight there to him. Let's talk about the two balls that are hit in the hole. You have one that's hit firm that's going to take you into the outfield, and you've got one that's hit short that you have to take control over. Probably the second baseman is playing double play depth or he's over toward second base bag. So you've got to take control of this play, get it to your pitcher in time. So let's show the footwork there. So as we're in the ready position and the ball is hit hard, 
it's going to take us deep. So we need to take that angle, open up, take the angle back, and as we catch the ground ball in the hole, probably it's going to take us into the outfield, our momentum. So make sure we catch it, take into the outfield. You might take one step in the hole, or you might be able to just pivot. But now you've got the task of hitting your target that's moving across the infield, which is the pitcher covering the back. So you're going to make sure you've got a short throw and follow that throw. Take your nose to the target and go straight back to it because we want to make sure we lead the pitcher chest high. If you give him a toss that's at his feet, at his feet or behind, it's going to be tough for him. So we got to lead him about chest high. Think about being a quarterback. The next ball is that one that's hit softly. And this is probably the hardest one because we have to redirect our, um, our energy here. So when we're in a ready position, the ball's hit soft, we have to run, we have to attack, come either catch in a fielding position, uh, that nice triangle, or come catch at a one hop, and we have to return and turn inside to make sure that we give that nice easy to, uh, th toss to our pitcher. Make sure we lead him, think about being a quarterback. Now we have a difficult play, and that's the ball that's hit slow roller straight to you inside the grass that the pitcher cannot get to. The pitcher is instructed to go in a straight line, not to deviate outside the line, but going in a straight line. This is the ball that's coming in that we have to field and give a toss to our uh, pitcher. So what's going to happen is we have to attack, and most of the time it's taking us just a little bit away from the bag. So when we come in to field it, especially being a left-handed first baseman, we have to field it and then redirect our momentum in this little chop step, redirect quickly, show, and give him a toss. But the key here is to stay low and redirect quick because the momentum is going to want to carry you toward the pitcher's mound or towards going away from the bag, and you, it's so hard to try to make a toss this way. So we've got to make sure that we come in, catching it, redirect, and give him a toss. First basemen who pick baseballs or bad throws out of the dirt are not just lucky. They're guys that use a good technique to get it done. There's a lot of little tricks that you use to get this process done and so you can be consistent in picking balls out of the dirt. First of all, I have to think of an imaginary line or half arc or halo around my body at first base. And what I'm talking about is if I step away, I can create an arc all the way around the back. Now this arc or invisible line is my guide that if I see the throw slightly in front or in back of that line, that's my stretch line. That's where I'm going to go out after it and I'm going to try to kill the hop. Let's say the ball is on the inner half of the line here and inside my stride foot. I'm going to make sure that I keep palm down, not fingers up, but palm down and try to go get the hop, kill it, driving it down making sure I got a wide glove and just bury it as I come off the, the back. If you let that, a ball that's real close to you, if you let it hit the ground and try to move back, it can bounce anywhere. And most of the time it comes off the heel of your hand. If the ball is way outside my halo, that's where I have to battle it. I have to make sure that I stay low and I work down to up to catch the ball that has the big hop. Ball on the outside, thinking down, and then I can come up on the ball that's way out. But remember, remember your halo. If it's there, go kill it, kill it, trying to get the short hop. Holding runners on first base. I like to make sure that I give my pitcher a nice big target taking my glove out just a little bit, but being relaxed to give him somewhere to throw, give him a, a nice easy target. I want to make sure that I'm in fair territory here with my left foot. 
can't get outside in foul territory. Make sure it's in fair. Make sure you give them a wide base, big target, but able to move because you have to anticipate a bad throw here. A lot of times it's a quick bang bang play and sometimes the throws goes into the runner which makes it real difficult or they could throw it high. You might even have to make a stab in the dirt for a pick or making sure that we just block the ball, not letting it get by us to get that runner all the way to third base if it heads in foul territory. Once I'm set and the pitcher's about to make a pick off over here to first base, I want to make sure that I let the ball travel as far as the ball can travel toward the bag and toward the play. Position yourself, let the ball travel, and then you're going to take your glove directly to the bag and try to pick it up quick to show the umpire and sell it as an out. Sometimes the throws goes into the runner. To avoid a collision, you've got to be quick on your feet and you have to attack up and over to avoid the tag. If you just go directly into it, then you're asking for injury because the guy's coming back or the runner's coming back into you and that's a, a nightmare for both of you. Footwork here at first base can sometimes mean an out or being safe for the opposing team. So we want to really work on our footwork in routine daily work or when we're taking infield or just uh, ground balls hit the shortstop second or third when they're throwing over here not just sit standing over here taking throws but work on your footwork because we can use the bag and its width to increase our distance if we have a bad throw or even moving out toward our target. So when I jump in to come in toward the bag is I want to put both feet on the bag so now I want to give a nice low target, staying low so I can anticipate a throw from my left, right, up and down. Always, always anticipate a bad throw. We have to be ready for the bad and then react to the good. So once I have both heels on the back, staying low, bend the knees in case we got a throw that we have to jump up for. Let's say the ball is hit to the shortstop. I want to take my glove foot and we're going to step forward as my uh, hand foot or left foot is going to go up against the bag looking for the throw. Make sure that the throw is on the way before you commit to that spot. Make sure it's halfway there, you see the location. Now you can step, commit, and really get out after your throw. One of the keys and one mistake that a lot of uh, first basemen make is when they make contact with the bag, they use their heel. And when you use your heel, and maybe we have a bad throw, we have to go off target, and we really stretch for the ball, our heel has a tendency to come off, and it really is visual to the umpire. So if the heel comes up too early, obviously he's going to call him safe. So make sure that you put the ball of the foot contact the back and as we make our stretch I'm always going to stay on contact and it gives the runner plenty of bag to touch and get down the line. If the throws carry you to the left or the right I'm going to be able to use the width of the bag to touch maybe the inner third for a ball that is taking me inside the line and I can cover about another foot in distance for those bad throws. Let's say the ball is hit toward my outside. I can shuffle and now as you can see I can use the base to cover more ground, now stretch, catch the ball and now come off to make it look nice and smooth and make the throw look like an out. The biggest mistake first basemen make is they commit too early. 
we have to anticipate a bad throw. If the throw is to my right, I have to step to the right and I can cover so much ground as you can see if I put a line on the dirt. I can step and I really can stretch out and cover. But if I commit too early and take my stride foot or my reach foot in the wrong direction or the wrong place, and now the throw is over here to the outside, I can only reach so far. So your stride foot or reach foot is important. Do not commit early. Make sure you anticipate a bad throw, see the baseball, have quick feet, and adjust to it so you can make a nice wide area and make it easier for your third baseman, shortstop, and second baseman. When a first baseman has to hold a runner on, once the pitcher throws to the batter, and now he's got to get out to cover as much ground as possible to make sure that he can cover the ball in the hole. Remember, more balls are hit in between first and second than will be hit down the line. So use this line as kind of your protection. You've got to cover that inner half. So once I see the pitcher throw to home, I'm going to cross over and try to get a big step toward my direction. And now I can rotate over or pivot facing the hitter and depends on how quick we are and how quick the delivery is to our, from our pitcher is I might be able to get a sh two shuffles to get out. Mistakes are made because first basemen like to keep moving. So when they come off, their weight is moving around. They're not balanced. So an, an easy ball that they should be able to get back toward the bag, they can't get there. So as you come off with the left foot and now you're squaring up to the hitter and you receive a hot shot, if it takes you toward the hole, you're going to keep your momentum, bringing it up, make sure we're elbow dominant, get it up here so we can make a nice crisp throw toward our shortstop that's covering. Give him a throw on the inside part of the bag, chest high, get out of the way. If your momentum's carrying you toward second, you will not be able to get back toward the bag. Now we have a ground ball that's hit right at us. It's that hot shot, and a lot of times, first basemen like to catch it and stand up to make their throw to second base. We need to make sure that we catch it, stay low, get our momentum going to our target, and now we can make a nice, easy throw, chest high toward the shortstop, and get it there quick so we can get it back, so we can turn the double play. Now we have the ball, the hot shot, that's back toward the line. Remember, we're going to step with the left foot, shuffle out, depends on how quick the pitcher is. Now we've got the ball that's hit this way toward our bag. We need to cross over. We've got to try to catch this hot shot. And if it takes us toward the bag, now we've received the ground ball. We want to make sure with the left foot, step on the inside part of the bag, turn, use it as a brace to push off and give a nice throw to your shortstop. Thinking quick, athletic, stay low, turn the shoulder and get it over there. Covering bunts for first baseman. We want to make sure before the pitch is thrown that we know our situation and we know the speed of the runner. If we have a fast runner, we've got to move it to get to the ball and make a quick throw to the second baseman covering. If we have a slower runner, 
Obviously, we have a little bit more time. Make sure we catch the ball first and then give a good throw. So if I move in on the ball up here that is stopped, I want to make sure I come to it and I circle around the baseball. Once I get here, make sure that I use my throwing hand and push down into the ground to get a good grip. Pushing down, and now I can use my feet a shuffle if I have time. If not, I'm going to pick it up and make a nice quick throw to my second baseman covering. If I, have the, if I get to the bunt quick enough and the ball's still rolling, using the glove, I'm going to circle to almost make it easier for my throw, receive the ball, and now I can make my shuffle throwing the, to first base. Turn before the ball has, has stopped so I can make that throw. What a first baseman needs to do is make sure before the game starts that he checks out the territory he has. All fields are different. So the next thing is check out your wind. If the wind's blowing across, back, wherever it's blowing, that's where the ball is going to drift toward. So knowing where the wind's blowing, knowing the distance you have in foul territory is the first key before the game even starts. So now we have a fly ball that's, that's hit up here. We want to make sure that we try not to take our eyes off the ball. If we have to, we only want to make a quick glance toward the fence, the stands, or whatever's in our way to the left-hand side here, but making sure that we relocate the ball and we get there. A problem occurs when we try to look too long to the fence or to foul territory, and then we lose the baseball. And I like to always run slightly behind the ball so it's much easier if I get close to the fence, I can move in a lot better than I can move back. Once we catch a fly ball in foul territory, don't lose focus. Once you catch it, most of the time you have base runners. Catch the ball, be prepared to make a throw or hit a cutoff man, keeping your head in the game, in an athletic position, ready to make a play. When you're working with your corner infielders, don't neglect the regular infielding drills. They should be doing those first with the middle infielders. All your infielders do your regular glove drills, your field of power, your three-step, five-step, your Aussie drill, and your fly ball drills. It's only after that is done that your corner infielders go to their bases and work on their specific work that is specialized for that position. If you play first base, you always have to work on balls in the dirt. Remember, it's an art, it's a technique, it's not just luck catching balls in the dirt. And what we've done is we've created a drill here with two players or a coach and a player or two coaches. And what they're going to do is you're going to set up and you've got one coach that's going to throw the ball to the inside, which is going to be our backhand, and you've got another coach that's going to throw a ball to the outside, which will be our forehand. So, the coach on the inside throws the ball and we move and we make a nice pick to the inside, set our feet, throw it back to our target. Set our feet back, moving quick. The next coach is going to throw. We dig, set our feet, and make a toss. And we want to work back and forth as many times as possible, working on catching and challenge yourself. How many can you catch in a row? Working on technique. Remember, bury it down, palm down, palm down, trying to bury that short hop, not letting a long hop eat you up. Another drill working on picks, and it's my favorite drill, is you use a coach to hit a fungo. And all the coach is going to do is hit a nice, easy ground ball to you. But what the player is supposed to do here at first base is judge the hop, pick out the hop, and then pick it. Most of the time, it's going to be a nice, easy, maybe one hopper to you. But a lot of times, if you keep your foot on the bag, you're going to get a short hop in here. So that short hop, we go and pick it. So challenge yourself. See how many you can catch in a row? 
let the coach hit you a nice easy ground ball and as you get better he can pick up speed working inside and outside with your picks. Working on the fly ball drill with the fly ball going behind us, this gives us an opportunity to make sure that we practice dropping to get back behind the fly ball. So as a first baseman, we want to make sure our first step is we clear the hips or open, pivot open, so now it gives us a chance to round it off, get behind the fly ball, being able to come up and through it to make a catch and then check our runners. So make sure we open first, get behind the fly ball, coming up and through, and checking our runners.